My name is Mahadevan, and I'm a professor of applied mathematics at Harvard University, and also professor of biology there. And uh, my talk today was about the shape of nature and the nature of shape. Um, so how can we understand how one might describe shape? How can we understand how one can essentially mathematically make models to describe how these shapes are formed and perhaps then try and understand how to control them, how to engineer with them on scales which vary from the everyday to the planetary, from the everyday down to the atomic. One example that I chose is the question of how golden syrup falls and makes interesting patterns on a flat sheet. So um, this is a um, pot of golden syrup. Uh, it's an extremely thick or viscous liquid and when I pour it down onto a top of a glass plate you actually see that it coils. First it folds back and forth rather beautifully and then as I increase the height, the frequency of folding changes. And if I increase it even further, instead of folding, it starts to coil. Okay. So it has behavior which is similar to that of a solid. If I take a sheet of paper, for example, and I let it onto the ground, it will also fold. And if I had a large coil of climbing rope, for example, and I actually, again, let it fall onto the floor, it will start to coil. So a question that we have answered, others have answered as well, but we've been looking at in the past is, what is the behavior of the solid object? What is the behavior of the liquid object? The solid sheet behaves like the liquid sheet. The solid rope behaves like this liquid coil. And there's an old mathematical analogy which tries to connect the behavior of the solid to the liquid, going back to Rayleigh and Stokes, and if you use that, then you can understand one in terms of the behavior of the other. Okay, so now to switch to a completely different scale. So this is the everyday scale. One can essentially make a mathematical theory and explain things. Uh, if you now switch to the other extreme, our planet is 6,500, 400 kilometers in radius, uh, and we sit on a very thin crust, and that crust behaves like a solid on short times, on the time scale of a human being, but on very long times it flows. Even mountains flow on long enough times. Uh, and so one can ask about the structure and the shape of this thin crust we'll called the lithosphere on our planet. And what one sees, if you look at a picture of the globe, if you look at a, a, an atlas, or nowadays you look at it on the computer, and you see that there are islands, for example, the Aleutian Islands most beautifully, but also the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Japanese uh, islands, uh, the Hawaiian islands, they tend to fall along arcs. Um, so in fact, those are locations, these arcs are locations where hot magma, which has come out at some other location, has spread cools, becomes dense, and then falls back. Okay, so it's falling back into a less dense mantle. And during that fall back, you start to form these arc-like patterns. And the question is, does what you see on that large scale have anything to do with what I just showed you over here? Big difference, of course, is that over there, you're operating, operating on a spherical Earth. Over here, you just have a flat sheet. And something very basic that was understood 40 years ago, quantitatively, and we've used, is that if I take a ping pong ball or a tennis ball and I try to uh, make some part of it evert, I reverse its curvature, then the location of the place where it reverse curvature is always an arc. And Charles Frank, 40 years ago, realized that that may be used to explain how, in fact, our planet itself, how the lithosphere, the crust on which we stand, behaves. And using the analogy between a solid and a liquid, which I just described to you using the example of honey coiling or honey folding, one can essentially take mathematically the equations of elasticity and apply them to the scale of the Earth, where on millions of time scale of millions of years, in fact, the uh, lithosphere behaves more like a fluid or like a plastic solid. And using that analogy, then one can essentially start asking quantitative questions about is the mechanism uh, similar? Is the mechanism similar to what happens on the everyday scale?